in this tutorial I just want to have a quick look at the audio mixer panel over here and just show you some of the changes that have taken place and some of the options and the bits and pieces going on here now obviously I've already shown you that if you click this little drop down here you can get to your sends and effects or your effects up here and your sends down here we're going to go through the sends a bit later on we've already had a quick look at effects so I'm not going to do any more on those and what we have here is where do we output this track to where is it going to when we play something in this track at the moment it immediately shows up in the master but we might want to have a whole series of tracks that go to a submix before they go to the master to have additional effects applied and this is where you would route it now at the moment I haven't got any submixes but if I did they would come up here in this drop down so at the moment the only option it has is go to the master but if we do have a submix we can send them all to a submix add some additional effects and have the submix then go to the master this is simply panning right and left you can pan by clicking and dragging on the hot text or you can actually hold over the dial and hold your mouse button down and drag and then just get back to zero you can't double click but you can click in here and type zero to get back to the beginning inside here are what's called automation modes which I'm going to cover in another tutorial but this is the way that you animate the slider as it goes up and down on your audio mixer and then we have three buttons this button is to mute the track which just turns the track off so that you can't hear it but notice down here I've got an audio waveform in channel 1 audio 1 and this is audio 1 here by the way you can change that name so if I just made this my narration you'll notice it's narration down here and playing so you can change it here and it will update in the timeline but if I mute this track up here in the mixer panel please note that it does not mute it or turn off the speaker down here in the timeline the two are not linked so if I turn off the mute here so that this channel is now not muted and I turn off the speaker here notice there's no sign of mute changing up here so the two are not linked so just be a little bit careful because if something's not playing you may have muted it up here in the audio mixer but not muted it in the timeline or vice versa and you're wondering why on earth you can't hear it well it's because it's either muted up here or it's muted down here but the two are not linked this as I showed in the previous tutorial is the solo button which basically is the inverse of mute you can mute individual channels one at a time but if you solo a channel then all you'll hear is that channel and all the other channels will automatically mute and the beauty of the solo button is if you've got say 10 channels in here you can actually solo more than one channel so I could solo channel 1 and channel 3 together and by clicking those solo buttons I don't have to turn the mute on for all the other channels I can just solo those two to hear them together alone this button here is the recording button and when you click the recording button I get a warning message it says you haven't set up your audio hardware correctly and we'll go through that in another tutorial about setting up audio hardware but you do need to set up your audio hardware so that you've got microphones and speakers and how you're going to listen to it and how you're going to play it so I'm just going to click off for that and we will record audio in a separate tutorial so I'll show you how to do all of that in another tutorial then you've got the actual mixers itself and the actual audio meters and as I've shown before you can turn these up and turn these down if you get it to a place and you want to get it back to zero double click and the same with the master you can just double click and it takes it back to zero DB what's a DB? well DB stands for decibel and a decibel is one audio level of hearing so if you want to make an audio change to a sound one decibel is one audio or one perceived change in volume now the ear works on a logarithmic scale so the change in power if you like is tenfold between one db and the next db up so this is why it's measured in db zero db represents where it was recorded at and then we go up positive db and then down to negative infinity is basically no sound at all silence your track off now my experience with audio is that often when you're doing rough mixes you tend to work in a rule of three so you tend to increase audio by three db at a time or six db to make things louder or you'll come down minus three db or minus six db as you can see they're in rules of three here three six nine twelve so you can see that rules of three tend to work when it comes to changing volume particularly when you're doing it on a clip by clip basis and you want to just make things louder or quieter there are tools for doing this automatically and that doesn't obviously obey the rule of three 
but if you're working with DB it tends to be the rule of three. Now when it comes to a track what you want to do is have your peaks just slightly below zero particularly on the master so that when your track plays it never goes into this red area here so at the top here these two bits would go red if they go red your clip has distorted and the output will sound bad now occasionally although I probably shouldn't say this occasionally when you've got something that's supposed to sound distorted it's okay but as a general rule never go into the red and because of that different people work on different bases some say never go above your maximum peaks at minus 3 dB some people never go your maximum peaks above minus 6 dB in my opinion that's a little bit harsh but different people work in different ways my rule of thumb is don't go into the red when I actually do audio mixing generally speaking I make sure that I don't ever peak but I try and get things as close to zero as possible because I think that gives the best sound now when you're playing and I'm gonna play but you won't hear the audio because I'm muting it on my system you'll see that we've actually got these peaks going up and down and you can actually change how they look and how they work you've got these little bars that are dynamically moving showing you where the peaks were if you right click on the meter you get options at the moment we have dynamic peaks you can change those to static peaks static peaks will go to a point and stay at the highest level recorded and not change if you want to reset them right click reset generally speaking I tend to use mine at dynamic peaks because if this is going to distort and I know there's a problem I've gone in and dealt with that problem beforehand rather than just trying to have a static peak that's going way up here again this is useful if you tend to work on say minus 2 dB or minus 3 dB as your maximum peak then you can actually set it as a static peak and then when you play you can see how far it's going towards your total goal but as I say generally speaking I tend to leave this as dynamic peak you do also have the option of working with and I'm just going to right click again showing valleys and if you show a valley it shows the lowest level it goes to and again that's dynamic unless of course you take it to static peaks which will actually take a static valley as well so you can see the lowest it goes and the highest it goes again when I do audio I don't find this desperately helpful if there's a problem with the audio I'm going to hear it and if I've got a problem with the sound going too low then I feel that I've, I've dealt with that in a different way so um, yeah it's there it's a useful tool if you want to use it you've also got things like at the moment we're showing values I'm going to turn those off you can change the range that is measured over the default is 60 dB why would you want to change it maybe you've got a project that needs to well there you go you can change it and the only really other option you've got is this one that shows color gradient so if I just push play showing the color gradient you can see that it goes from green to yellow and orange and heading towards red and if you really want to take that off for some reason you can show no gradient and have it absolutely static I'd like to leave it a color gradient because I think that looks a little bit better but obviously if you do have gradients let me just turn that back on and play if you do take off the gradient and you play you'll clearly see that it's showing you at particular points that so it's up to you if you find that useful I'm going to take that back to show gradient and the only other thing to say down here is you can actually change those with the mouse on hot text if you want to apart from that and changing the channels name there are some buttons down here which are really to do with recording audio you've got a play button so you can actually play your channel from here and stop and you've got a loop button if you want things to loop around your work area to loop around and you can go to your in point and your out point uh, this particular layer is just the, the actual audio on that particular layer and you can play into out if you've set an into out so if I go to my timeline and hit I go forward a bit and push O I can in that sense play into out if I wish to and it can go round and round and loop if I wish but when it comes to recording here's the record button here's the play button and that's where we can actually work on these bits and pieces just going to right click in my timeline and clear into out the only other thing to show you is the audio meter over here like these meters over here if I pull these up and down you'll see that they resize which is really nice likewise the new audio meter in CS6 over here resizes beautifully so that when you go between the panels it can be as big or as small as you like and you've got similar options as you have in the audio mixer as you would expect and also you have options to monitor mono channels and stereo pairs depending on how things are set up and also you can solo an individual channel if you wish so that's a quick look at the audio mixer and all that can be done with it 
In the next tutorial we'll have a quick look at recording audio and setting up the audio so that we can record in Premiere Pro.